holy shit, Adobe is acquiring Figma. All right, let's get into it guys. Let's go ahead and break down and analyze this entire acquisition without the emotions. I'm kidding, I'm a designer and I'm already emotional. Now, first off, I'm gonna share my thoughts on the price tag, then we'll dive a little bit into the future of Figma and their employees and what happens next. And at the end, I will just start crying whilst trying to hold myself together to share my final thoughts. Now, Adobe just released a lengthy announcement with text displayed in units of 1M. In other words, 16 pixels, but I still found it hard to read. It was so dense. That aside, let's talk about the price tag. Now, today, Adobe announced it has entered into a definitive merger agreement to acquire Figma for approximately 20 billion in cash and stocks. Now 20 billion is a lot of money and for the business nerds, that's a huge valuation. That's a 50 times multiple. But what does that actually mean? From a business point of view, according to Adobe's official press release, Figma has an ARR, which is annual recurring revenue of $400 million. That is equivalent to 33,333,333 pro members or 8,888,888 organizational customers. Sounds pretty damn good, right? But at a 20 billion valuation, that means Adobe is paying 50 times their ARR. So according to Microcap, the average revenue multiple for high growth tech companies is 10 to 20 times. 50 times means that Adobe is stretching themselves very thin to making this acquisition happen. To me, this shows that they are determined to maintain a leading position in this industry, the product design industry, which they have been playing catch up ever since. Now at such an astronomical valuation, <laughs> Adobe is probably looking to eliminate and actually integrate the entire Figma ecosystem into their suite for the long run, but also leveraging their team, their expertise, and also their IP in other areas of Adobe. Now, I've got a juicy quote for you later in this video that indicates this. So just keep watching. Now, let's talk about the future of Figma. What's going to happen next? So here's a quote from the official press release. Figma's web-based multiplayer capabilities will accelerate the delivery of Adobe's Creative Cloud technologies on the web. Now, as I mentioned before, Adobe is not just buying Figma, the tool, but everything else in between. Adobe will be leveraging their talent their IP and their expertise in bringing the Creative Cloud suite of apps to the web as well. Now potentially, just potentially making them all collaborative. Now, this is a revolutionary move. This is huge change. That reminds me of what Satya Nandela did for Microsoft. Now, whether Adobe can successfully make this happen, that is another question. So in the future, we could see with the help of Figma's expertise, Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator, and all these other apps on the web and collaborative as well. Now, something else I found that was interesting with Adobe's amazing innovation and expertise, especially in 3D, video, vector, imaging, and also fonts, we can further reimagine the end-to-end -end product design in the browser. And this was said by Dylan Field, co-founder and CEO of Figma. Now, how I understand this is that Adobe will be integrating their database of creative assets into Figma itself. Now, I can imagine maybe Typekit, which is Adobe's premium font collection, would be a handy and nice integration into Figma. But one thing that I would want to avoid is to integrate things that, which is not product design relevant. Now, once again, Figma has done so well because of its laser focus on solving clear problems for the product design space. It's not generic. If we were to integrate random assets from the Creative Cloud, it could maybe dilute Figma's purpose and lead it to becoming another generic design tool, opening up an opportunity for another competitor to take the lead. And that's something we don't want to happen. Now, what about the future of Figma employees? Now, quote, approximately 6 million additional restricted stock units will be granted to Figma CEO and employees that will vest over four years subsequent to closing. Now, this is important because as of recording of this video, Adobe's share price has dropped 16% to $309. This means as of recording of this video, Adobe will be allocating $1.854 billion as golden handcuffs to retain and keep Figma talent for four years after this deal closes. Now, vesting means that they can unlock 25% each year within the four years. 
So this is sort of really good news because this is the best that Adobe can do to maintain and retain Figma's expertise, knowledge and talent within the company to continue building out Figma and also help bring Adobe Creative Apps to the web. Now, if you wondered why does the share price drop 16% when they are acquiring such a great tool, does this mean Figma is not a great tool? No, it's because investors are now questioning whether or not Figma is actually worth the 50 times valuation. Now, no one will actually know what will happen. This might be a good or bad thing, but here's my prediction. It doesn't make sense for Adobe to try keep XD and Figma running together. They do the same thing. It's just an unnecessary cost on the income statement. Now, unless they want to monopolize the industry and have multiple apps on the market and own it all themselves, to me, it doesn't really make that much sense. Instead, I feel that merging an XD team with the Figma team could be a smarter decision as they can ramp up the production of Figma and maintain its market leading position. Now on top of that, as long as Dylan sticks around, maintains order and more importantly pushes for his vision, I think Figma might still have a chance because Figma has a crazy moat right now with its technological advantage and the diehard community. If they continue to stay focused on product design and not get distracted from its path, then that's what I can hope for. However, in reality, as according to Bloomberg, Figma may add less than 2% to Adobe's sales growth rate and will likely decrease margins. So business is always going to be business. No matter how great of a tool Figma is, if it doesn't hit the business objectives of increasing top and bottom line returns or the board's expectations, then Adobe could reprioritize their initiatives away from Figma later down the track as other opportunities might seem more enticing, which ultimately is how great tools can lose their dominance in the market after an M&A like this one. Now, the silver lining is that I personally have worked with a bunch of Adobe employees and they are all great people. They're switched on and they're extremely smart. So let's just hope that Adobe's resources can really help supercharge Figma and exceed our expectations. <sighs> to be honest, I still can't believe that Adobe is acquiring Figma, but let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this absolute bombshell? Do you hate it? Do you love it? Are you an Adobe supporter? Do you hate Adobe? Unload it or in the comments below. Let other people hear what you have to say. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to gently smash that like button and subscribe for more. And for the diehard fans, make sure to turn on that bell notification and I will see you guys in another video very soon.